again, all you capitalist pigs, you greedy, money-grubbing speculators, you scourge of virtually any government that you might be part of. <laughs> Welcome back. My name is Jason Stapleton. This is the Forex Market Preview, and this week we're going to be taking a look at um, a couple of pairs that present some opportunities. Uh, on the, we, we could get into uh, John Malden wrote in a really interesting letter. He's been talking for a while about uh, you know some different options that could be happening in the eurozone. I want to discuss something very briefly here before we get started into the technical analysis side. On uh, we discussed in the private client group. And in addition to teaching a little bit on uh, trend continuation trading, which is basically a, a trend following methodology with them, I also talked a little bit about polar flips and and then on the more fundamental side, I, I discussed a you know a concept that is foreign to a lot of people. And you see, a lot of people will look at what I talk about in Europe and the issues that are going on there. And they will immediately want to come back. And I don't know if this is out of, uh, you know, defense of, of Europe, which is fair, um, or if it's the fact that they look at they're one of the followers of the of the mindset that, you know, America is going to hell in a handbasket and, and we're printing money. And they, they go by that mantra that, you know, your America is collapsing and it's really the, the, the state that's in the most trouble. It doesn't really matter what. You, you know what school or philosophy you go by. What I tend to get a lot is is some feedback on that, where people will say, "Well, oh, Jason, you don't understand. What about the printing that that America is doing? What about all the terrible things that are happening in America? Why don't you talk about what's happening in America?" And guys, this is the key piece that I want you to take away from this lesson uh, or from this forex market preview on the fundamental side, and that is, it doesn't matter what the truth is, okay? So, for example, it may be absolutely horrific in America, and, and really, if you take a look at the numbers, I, I wrote last year a 25-page paper all, that I entitled the Babylon Report, and the Babylon Report was nothing more than my talking about all of the problems that exist in the U.S. and what I think is going to happen long term, and it's very damning of the United States and where we're headed and the path that we're on. The problem is the market takes into account specific fundamental information at specific times and that varies from crisis to crisis so right now it doesn't really matter how bad things are in the United States all eyes are looking at Europe in my opinion Europe is in far worse shape than America at this point basically because America has some options now those options are not good for the dollar and they're not good for America but it forestalls a lot of the problems that we're seeing in the United States that, that we're seeing in Europe right now things that Europe cannot do like printing money but it wouldn't matter even if America was in worse shape because right now all eyes are on Europe and that means all fundamental decision making all fundamental things are being looked at from the point of view of Europe and how bad Europe is and so now when there's bad news in Europe we see bad numbers we see thing bad things happen to the euro dollar and when there's good things that happen we see rallies in the euro dollar it's almost like what's happening in America doesn't matter and that drives guys crazy who know how bad it is in America and they say well why don't people look at this and my my point that I want to make to you today is it doesn't matter it doesn't matter why. The point is they're not. So what we want to do is we want to focus our, our decision making, we want to focus our attention where everybody else has their attention focused if we're going to be making short-term trading decisions. Now if you're making longer-term trading decisions and you're trying to make you know hedge fund style bets over long periods of time, even then even though you're going to want to understand what's happening, you can't begin to take positions based on those fundamental analysis until the market shifts its line of sight. Um, if you guys have seen the, the movie, the oh, what's the name of it? It's the Hobbit movie, the Lord of the Rings series. Excuse me. In the Lord of the Rings series, they have the eye, you know, the all-seeing eye, and the eye is looking one direction and it turns the other direction. You have to kind of hide from the eye. Right now, the eye is on Europe. It's not on the United States. Now, when the eye shifts to the United States, and it could happen tomorrow or next week or next month or next year, but when the eye shifts, 
Well, now all of a sudden, now we need to start paying attention to that. Now we're going to start seeing the fundamental numbers and the things that America is doing start to have an effect on the market. Right now we're seeing it have virtually no effect. So that was my little tidbit uh, to throw at you on you guys like I got some really good feedback from you guys saying, hey, we would like to know more about the why behind the fundamentals. And, uh, you know, we would like to know more about that, you know, hearing your thought process on that. So I'm throwing some of that in to, to kind of spice things up a little bit. Let's go ahead right now and look over at the charts. And the one thing that I want to show you, what we're going to key in on today is this Japanese uh, dollar, uh, dollar yen chart. And the dollar yen is almost at its lows. I'm going to break this. I'm going to go all the way out to a monthly chart here. And as I do this and I crunch up this chart, you're going to see I've got data all the way back to 1985, okay? Now, I don't know what was happening prior to, prior to 1985, but I can tell you this is the lows in the dollar yen are be fastly becoming approached. Fastly becoming approached? I don't think that's correct. It doesn't matter. We're going to go with it. If I drop in a line here, the absolute low, 7554 on the dollar yen. We are sitting at the previous resistance level from the double bottom that pulled us off of those lows. Now these are very recent lows, okay? Uh, just over the last uh, basically 2011 it was when we came in, uh, it was uh, October 2011. We're coming back down into that and now we're sitting along previous structure resistance. And now that has become some support. Now let's drop that down to a daily chart. This is now what we're looking at. Market for several days has been churning right around that level, trying to decide. We're now sitting 78.25 is where we're at. There is an advanced pattern here. Some of you already see it. It is a cipher pattern. A cipher pattern coming in right along that support level. Now, I did talk about this you know, probably a couple of weeks ago about the potential long entry here. This is a very nice long entry here. Not only do cipher patterns pay uh, a significant period of the time, you've also got very nice risk reward because stops will have to be below these spike lows here around 177.60 or excuse me, 77.66. Looking for a long move. Where are we hoping this thing will go? Well. Initially, what we want to see is 7894s with follow-on to 7958s. So what we're hoping is a 382 and a 618 for our two targets. Now, am I saying it's going higher, uh, that we're not going to see retest the lows? No, I'm not. All I'm saying is, is at this point, the advanced pattern set up beautifully along a previous structure resistance level, and the market is showing some, some real trouble getting underneath of it. So, the one thing that will negate this trade is if we gap below these lows at 77.90. If we have a gap below 77.90, then this is a trade that, uh, that I would stay away from. If that doesn't happen, I mean, you, a guy could buy them on a limit. I don't want to, you know, this is, first of all, if you didn't read the disclaimer, none of this is a suggestion for you to buy or sell any currency. This is for educational purposes only. And I am not licensed by anybody who gives out licenses for this kind of stuff. So uh, trade at your own discretion and uh, to your, at your own peril. But if we gap below, what that sig signals is significant shift in, uh, in some sort of sentiment. Something happened there. And if we don't know what it is, we sure don't want to be playing with it. So other than that, as long as we don't gap below, this is a buy. It's a buy right at the open. And we're moving now. So we'll see what happens here. Um, Let's run over to the Euro. Euro uh, private client group. We spent a lot of time in the private client group this week talking about the trading decisions that I made on the Euro. I ended up shorting the Euro last week. I shorted it right at these triple top highs. One, two, three. I caught the entire leg of the move down. I exited on Friday for a very nice profit. The market moved uh, about from about 124. My last position exited 122.80s, 85. So a couple of hundred pips there, and I traded in and out of that all the way down. So it was a very nice trade, and of course, if you were a private client group member, you 
understand exactly what happened there. And if you're not, you're kind of in the dark. But the question is, what's going to happen next? Well, excuse me, I had to have a drink. Um, we rallied on this, uh, this bar here, and we came back up into this level right here. I'm going to go ahead and draw it in for you. Bam, right there. And you can see, came down, came right back up into, it's 123.12s, okay? 123.12s. So for the, every, for the one guy who keeps complaining that the numbers are too small and he can't see what's happening, uh, get your pen and paper out. It's 123.12s. Look at the resistance level. You got resistance here. You got resistance here. You got it here and here. I mean, I'll just I'll draw in the circles. Whoops. Now, yeah, hang on. Let's do squares. You got it here. You got it here. And here. And here. And here. And let's scroll back a little bit more. Let's see if there's anywhere else in here. Yeah, we got it here. All the way back here and here on the retest. So we got a lot of, there. there is a significant level here on the four hour chart. One, two, three, four, five, seven tests. Market came right back up into it. If we come back up into there again, again, it's an area where you can potentially short. There are actually a lot of different areas that you're gonna be able to short in here as this market ascends if it chooses to ascend. If we come back up, you can look for a short position here. You can look for a short position here. You can look for one here, and you can look for one here at previous resistance. Now, the big question becomes, well, Jason, you know, once we come into that level, how do I know which one of these I need to be shorting? And that goes to your rules of engagement. That's something that I can't tell you how to do because there are a million different ways to do it. You can wait for example. Let's go ahead and uh, let's pull in a study give you some simple concepts here that you can use. So let's pull in a study and let's just get a, um, let's use a MACD. Okay. So we have a MACD. Now, let's say the market starts to ascend like it did here. And the market's ascending, 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 and then we hit kind of these triple top highs. And then look what happens to the MACD right there. We're along a structure resistance level. We hit one, two, triple top highs, and you're thinking, man, this looks like a great place to short. I just don't know where I should be getting short. Well, look at this. MACD crossover. Boom. Sell them. Look at what would have happened. You would have caught the entire move. Again, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You look at the pullback here. The market goes into the support level. We see the rally off of that. You're like, man, this may be a good place to buy. I'm just not sure. Boom. In this case, you bought just as the MACD crossed over and you caught just a hair of it right up into a resistance level. So you've got to be paying attention. You can also use something like a stochastic. So let's go ahead and pull in a stochastic. Okay. And let's change some of the parameter settings on this. Let's make it, let's go 12, 5, and 5. That's 12, 5, and 5 for the one guy who complains about the numbers. With stochastic now, you have the same thing. You have areas where the market will cycle up and cycle down. And you can be looking for areas where the market crosses over. There's a, there's a stochastic crossover right there, right before the market falls off, right after it's up into a resistance level. Okay, You see the same thing here where the market's trading sideways and then boom, we get the crossover right there. That's a loser. You come back here, you start looking at the crossovers, you get your first MACD crossover, well, it would have been right there, would have been a nice short for you. So there are some different tools that you can use to wait for the market to come into a resistance level and then to see the market cycle over. Um, and I won't get into all of those. I don't do a whole lot of this because, you know, it just gets a really complicated and people want a whole lot more instruction on it than I'm able to give in the Forex market preview, but there are a whole lot of ways. You can use candle reversals. You can wait to see a pin bars or dojis. You can wait to see the market come up into this area and then get a break below, close below the previous candle. There are a ton of different ways that you can ID these different mini support levels in here and look for a place to get short. What I'm getting at here is that if we go out to the daily chart, 
what you're going to see is this market has just been on a downward slope for quite a while now. And until these resistance levels are broken, way up here at 2660s, until that gets violated, we're still technically in a downtrend. And so if you're using higher time frame confirmation, you have to be looking at that and saying, well, I have to have a bearish bias for my swing trading positions because we're still bearish on my higher time frame. Now, if you're day trading, if you're down on a five minute chart, if you're down on a chick tick chart or something like that, well, then you don't need to worry about the fundamental, or I'm sorry, the, the technical bias of a daily chart on a higher time frame because you can clean up, you know, 10, 15 pips going either direction all day long. So, anyway, we're getting, we're running a little long here. But I did want to talk a little bit about pound yen. I'm going to do this very quickly. You can see here the close of the daily candle on Friday, which is right here. Um, very, uh, that's a that's a bullish, you know, that's a bullish signal that uh, there's an intention here to go higher. If I go down to the four-hour chart, you're going to see that the market has really been banging against 123s. And right above 123, we got 123.72, about 100 pips higher. After we get above 123.72, well, now it's blue skies to 125.30s. You probably got a really nice move there. There's no advanced pattern setting up here that that I you know that I would trade. But what I would watch for is I would watch to see what this market does. If we can get above these previous highs right here at around uh, 23.25, counter trend traders looking to short at 23.72, and trend followers, what you're going to wait for is a break above here, and then a pullback into previous structure resistance, which should then become support, and you're looking for a long opportunity. So anyway, that's going to do it today, guys. I appreciate you listening. Um, this is a little quick because I my, had my daughter dedicated today at church, and so we were had all the family in, and I finally got all of them out the door and, and on their way, and so now I've ha finally had a chance to sit down. So this video is going to be out to you just a little light, a little late, and I apologize for that, um, but I'll make it up to you next week. So until um, next time, good luck and good trading. I'll talk to you soon.